This is Public Resource. This is the TDM Today Show starring Roger Magulis. And we have a special guest today. It's Dr. Gitanjali Yadav. She is a scientist at the National Institute of Plant Genome Research in New Delhi, India. She is a lecturer at the University of Cambridge and a fellow of St. Edmunds College. Gita is a noted authority on plant computational biology. So over to you, Roger. Uh, one, welcome, Gita. Thanks for joining us. And I recently read a book called The Hidden Life of Trees, and it got me thinking about plants and stuff, and how, how do plants communicate with each other? You can tell us some more about that. Hello, Carl. Hello, Roger. Thank you for having me on, on this show tonight. So you're right, Roger. Plants have evolved some of the most, most advanced forms of communication on the planet. They communicate with each other, or not just with each other, but also with the rest of the biosphere. And they do it through complex bouquets of chemicals. You know, the, the scent of lavender, the and much more that we can't see or fathom are part of a variable chemical code of plants. At spring here in California, we're seeing lots of mushrooms. I know from reading that hidden life of trees that mycelium are considered important uh, parts of the communication between plants. How much is that part of your work? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, so, so plants communicate above ground and below the ground. Above ground communication is all about the you know, complex bouquets of chemicals that I just spoke about, but the underground communication through mycelia, just like you're saying, uh, also through roots of plants is a completely completely different field of science altogether. My work has much to do with the above ground communication, but you're, you've rightly said that plant communication, whether below or above, has now emerged as one of the most fascinating fields of study in modern science, especially, I would say, especially in view of the intricate mechanisms that plants have evolved to, to survive under, under ever-changing, unfavorable and you know, adverse environmental conditions. So, um, yeah, that's, that's right, absolutely. Right, it does sound pretty complicated and it sounds like there's probably a lot of science behind this. So uh, I look forward to continuing this conversation. Um, so the, the concept, the whole concept of how plants communicate, how they learn and build memory, even build memory, rather than being, as most of us tend to think of them as, as automatons, you know, unthinking automatons, the idea is not new. And it was first hinted at by, by Sir Charles Darwin, and then again by Sir J.C. Bose in India 100 years ago. But it has taken over a century for scientists like me and others, you know, to, to really recognize that plants are highly complex organisms and they're using this huge suite of species specific sensory systems to monitor all sorts of relevant parameters in their environment. Now, they, they, they can gauge abiotic, biotic factors, they optimize their own behavior at all times in an ever-changing environment. And that's what we are trying to, to investigate in the lab. That sounds fascinating. I look forward to hearing more. Thanks, Gita. Gita, I've got one final question then before uh, we, we end this show here. Uh, so I, I understand plants can communicate and sense and communicate with each other. They communicate with animals as well. Is, is this part of this language of plants in which they talk to, to other species and, and other, other you know, animals and insects and things like that? Yes, Carl, absolutely. So the whole idea of symbiosis has evolved in so many different ways between different species where they help each other um, against common predators. So the idea of the enemy of my enemy being my friend or the, you know, the friend of my foe being my foe and so on is, is all true, particularly in the plant world. And we are exact, uh, this is just what we're trying to do in the lab by uh, deciphering plant communication, investigating the phytochemical landscape or the 
dynamic mosaic of this this complex chemistry that is surrounding us all in space and time for plants to have you ever noticed the caterpillar will always eat the leaf up to the half up to half and then jump off to a, to find a new leaf that's because by then the plant has communicated to it that i've got you know i've got defense mechanisms i've got toxins here that you're going to get if you don't move off me similarly plants sometimes call wasps over to get rid of of predators or not just predators but also their you know parasites eating them up and so these wasps are the predators of the parasites that plants are are currently suffering from and all of this calling that predator back to yourself to save not just yourself but also your congeners other cousins and friends of the same species in the same area plants are doing this by by releasing by emitting uh, chemicals exactly well, there you have it. That's totally fascinating. This has been the TDM Today Show with Roger Mangoulis and our special guest, Dr. Gitanjali Yadav. Thank you very much. Our work at Public Resource is made possible by a generous grant from Arcadia. Arcadia, a charitable fund of Lisbeth Rousing and Peter Baldwin. Additional support provided by contributions from citizens like you. Thank you for your support. Public Resource is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation with headquarters in the state of California and dedicated to the principle that access to knowledge is a human right.